Welcome everyone joining us back. Uh, this part of today's service is pre-recorded. We're, we're here Thursday night in church recording this. And we thought, you don't just want to hear people preach about fellowship. We thought, we'll practice it. We'll invite some friends down and we'll just have a discussion uh, that's personal, practical, real. How, have, how do people find fellowship at the moment? So I have with me two very wonderful special guests and close friends, Andy and Sharon, who run the uh, Springfield and Chelmer Village Life Group. It's, it's great to have people joining us in here, and we just want to chat about fellowship and about how it's worked out. And I guess my question to Andy and Sharon and Nick and even myself is, um, what has changed with fellowship during lockdown and the last six months? How have things changed? Well, obviously, we're not seeing people in uh, larger groups. Um, we're seeing people a lot more on electronics uh, medium, such as Zoom. Uh, and when we do see people, um, it's been in ones and twos and obviously up to sixes. Uh, and we've been meeting people in the park. We've been going for walks with people. And it's been rather strange really but i think in the end you get used to it and you can have some really good chats with people mm. yeah 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 i think i'd add to that as well i think many of us when the, the restrictions came in all we felt was maybe or we perceived limitations because that was the word that came with it there was mm. limitations on what was possible but i think for, for myself and for leslie that we you know we've been trying to just explore how we can just think a bit more creatively. How can we how can we do something? As you say, go out for a walk, go and meet somebody uh, in a park or, or something of that nature, or, or maybe more recently, have somebody around for coffee uh, and, and, and enable that to be distanced. And there are some wonderful places to walk in this town as for well. Sure. Um, when you start getting off the beaten track and perhaps going even a bit further, it's quite amazing what's around us. How have you guys found it when you have met with people has it felt different to when you met before is it more special is it harder is it challenging how, how have you guys found it i think it's good to actually meet up with people in in ones and twos socially distanced because um it's we, we have met our life with our life group on zoom every week but and that's great but you, you have only, if you've been on Zoom, you'll know, you can only have one person really talking at any one time. So whereas in life group or, you know, when you meet with a bigger group, you, you ask, I mean, I love gardening, as you might guess. Really? If you, <laughs> and if you, if you want to have a little chat with somebody else who you know likes gardening, in, uh, over coffee, you can have a chat in the corner while the guys over there are talking about something completely different. But on Zoom, if I have a chat with yeah. the person in our life group who I know loves gardening, or the one or two, it, we kind of take it over and you can see everyone else sort of sitting there going like this. But it's lovely to have a chat about things that really interest you, one-to-one um, -one or in a smaller group. Yeah, and I think one of the, one of the benefits as well of, of meeting... Um, in a in a non-zoom way or you know you meet face to face is that you're seeing everybody three-dimensionally and there's yeah. definitely They've a different legs. yeah there's yeah. definitely a, there's, an, there's an element to it that where we can interact with each other and the, the zoom call it has its benefits while we can't meet in maybe a larger context but when you see but see somebody three-dimensionally i know that sounds like a ridiculous thing to say uh, but we've we've not seen as many people three-dimensionally in the last six months as we did before mm -hmm. um, but having that capacity and i think think for for myself and for leslie we've come back here into chelmsford we came back into Chelmsford at a time when we were trying to reconnect with people and now we're trying, to re we're trying to establish contact with people who we didn't know. So we've been where we can, inviting people around who we didn't know, uh, making contact with people who we didn't know and, and, and I guess taking that first step of just enabling people to share their story with us and our story with them. So uh, what was it like? Because you moved to Chelmsford, what, two weeks before lockdown really hit hard so yeah well we moved into Chelmsford on the 18th of March which was when our rent started uh, so we, we really did get into our property you know pretty much fairly close to the to, to the sort of cut off date really um, so that has felt quite surreal in a lot of ways but yeah. that I suppose for us is, is 
not so much in the early days because the lockdown was probably more severe, but suppose sort of post June, July time, that's enabled us to maybe just think about who can we, you know, get alongside, and you know, maybe when I've been down there on a Sunday, seeing some of the team down here, connecting with people, and then just visiting people as I've been maybe dropping off DVDs, an opportunity just to connect with people in a way that maybe I wouldn't have done beforehand or in an normal, yeah. an ordinary situation. And what what have you guys found hard? during lockdown like I, I think it's the the fact that you don't go out as much um we were joking uh, earlier that this is probably the first evening that we've actually been outside our house it seems it seems yeah. a bit strange as if we were doing something naughty driving down here <laughs> today um, um i mean obviously you see your neighbors um we obviously uh, see family um and we obviously see our life group, but it, it doesn't seem to stretch much beyond that at the moment. And I think that's where we need to actually all be reaching out, trying to meet people as, as we can, obviously within the guidelines. Yeah. And that's one of the things I found difficult is I loved seeing everyone and connecting with everyone on a Sunday. Mm. And without that, you, have to, you do have to work so much harder to connect with different people. And um, you have to know their contact details sometimes to be able to call them you and mm. and if you don't have them you've got to find ways of getting them and and there are these challenges that we've got to get around uh, but when you look at them they're not huge challenges no it, they just seem to put put us off sometimes and i don't know why uh, because if we really were devoted to connecting with all these people i'm sure we would all uh, be better at we also can be quite worried about trying to connect with someone and think they're going to think, you know, why are they phoning me and rebuff us? And, mm. But most people are welcome, will welcome a call. Yeah. And it's very unlikely that anybody will be sniffy about it. No. Unless you're trying to sell double glazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, double glazing salesman. <laughs> I must admit, if you see a strange phone number come up, and I think a lot of people do this these days, if there's yeah. one they don't know or they're not familiar with, I mean, I, I do that. I pick up the phone and go, hello. Whereas if you recognise the phone number, yeah. you say, oh, hello. And um, the, you, you feel as if you're doing that to other people. But once you say, oh, hi, it's, you know, it's Sharon here from, from church, you know, hopefully people will say, oh, hi, how are you doing? Yeah. Or who are you? Or who are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> and so... We, we all know that running a life group takes a bit of investment. It takes time, it takes planning. Would you say that investment has paid dividend or has it, it do you still sometimes pull your hair out and say, why do we do this? Let's, let's be open and honest about this. Like, what, what's the balance of, of these things? Well, obviously, sometimes you do pull your hair out, but I haven't got much to pull out, so it doesn't <laughs> happen that often. But, but by and large, it's good fun. And, you know, if you're thinking of starting a life group or anything like that, don't be daunted by it, because all you're doing is getting a whole group of together, people together, being friends together, praying together, and reading the Bible and learning together. And... In the end, everybody supports each other. That's what's the great bit about it. Mm. You know, you say leading a life group, but I mean, there are people in our life group. Uh, next week, for instance, we're not doing anything. Um, we've got another couple in the life group that's going to do it for us. It, and it's interesting because I, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday who's also a minister and strangely was preaching on, ex, on fellowship from Acts too as well hope it goes well I won't be listening but um we were talking about um, a ministry team we'd both served on years ago and how it was so special because we enjoyed just uh, we were all friends and we were all so committed and we thought it was the best thing we wanted to be there we wanted to do it and the way you're describing a life group is it, it reminded me of that that kind of you, when you enjoy it when you think it's, you wouldn't want to be anywhere else, it's not work, it's not hard in the same way, is it? No. Um, and, and, and we have, um, you know, we have 
social stuff as well even on um, on zoom we've been doing Pictionary and things like that so we have fun and um, if you know Andy you know he's got a really um, good sense of humor <laughs> <laughs> is, so that, is that a compliment? He was so inspired by Tim's <laughs> preach last week with the penguins yeah. that he <clears throat> went out often and he, um, when we had our groceries delivered, he ordered two big packs of peng penguin chocolate bars. And so our life group friends and some other people in Chalmer Village and Springfield have received chocolate penguin bars through the letterbox this last week. Um, which is a bit of a joke, but actually it's just saying no, you know, we're it? all part of a penguin huddle together here. Um, let's, we're, we're all let's penguins have... together huddling in. And, you know, when you need help, you're in the middle and the outside guys are protecting you. I mean, I, I'd like to add to the analogy. I think the outside guys need to be facing out as well so they can bring other people in. But I think possibly I'm twisting what penguins do at that point. Uh, other chocolate bars are available, but they yes, don't do what say. a penguin does. I, I heard Nick does paid, a very I'm good being paid impression by the makers of a penguin. penguin for this, you know that. <laughs> I heard Nick does a very good impression of a penguin. I don't oh, know if no. you guys have heard that. <laughs> I heard he does a good impression of a penguin. I think no. he now needs to do it. I'm just, I'm just too tall to be a penguin. That's the problem. <laughs> um, He's well, not going to do it. He's not going to do it. No, no. it's fine. But it, making it fun is is part of. I mean, the, the groups I've really enjoyed being in over the years are all the ones where you have fun together. I think, um, yeah. I think being devoted to fellowship doesn't necessarily have to be this burden that that we think. Actually, uh, so. sometimes I, I don't know what your experiences have been, but but sometimes in a community of faith, the people who you laugh with can end up being the people who you're quiet with as well yeah and i think that sense of you know well you touched on it a little bit there didn't you and and sharon you were talking about uh, uh about the body essentially one corinthians 12 about how we all have need of one another and I, th I think that's a really key part of it isn't it we we have need of each other it's not even that we have want of each other we mm. we actually have need of each other and that mm. that's just so that's so pivotal isn't it into into what we understand as being genuine fellowship we need mm. one another mm. yeah. and so I, I guess one of the things that we're saying from this is um, wh wherever you're at whatever you've invested in start to build in to share life with people mm. to find something and I know people um, even in the last week or two and they've prayed for an opportunity to have fellowship and someone's messaged them and they've gone out and done a just a simple fun activity or whether it's a walk or cycling or tennis or knitting or just going for a drink and chatting but people are starting to to think i need to invest in these just simple little relationships and in the next part i'm going to try and bring out some real practical ways we can do that and some of the things that are happening in church um some of the things we're deliberately putting in place to try and help you with that, but also encouraging you to be brave and step out and, mm. and you know, take some risks in connecting people and asking people to do things. And if you're doing something, just inviting someone to join you in doing it. Um, has anyone got any last tips for us or, or for the people out there? I think it's important to keep praying about it. Yeah. So um, yeah. we pray about when we're pre preparing or planning life group. And even if you're going to make a phone call to somebody, pray and ask God's Holy Spirit to, to be with you um, and, and bless you in that. And, and then or pray and ask for an opportunity to you know, ask a friend. So, you know, you're looking to God to guide you. It's not it's not just you doing it on your own. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree I, with that. And, and I'd, got say, good I'd say just step out and, and do it. You know, don't think, oh, shall I, shan't I? Just pick up the phone and ring somebody. It doesn't do any harm. And, and you might be able to get a double glazing sale as well. Andy, tell us about your miraculous miracle with the penguin bars. Oh, yes, there was a bit of a miracle with the penguin bars. So, therefore, I needed a certain number. I go on to the supermarket, as other supermarkets available, I won't mention their name, to buy them and find <laughs> out they're half price. So I thought, well, that's the result. I then had to find something to put these penguins in. And when the delivery came from the supermarket, we'd ordered some medium freezer bags. And um, <coughs> they, they'd um, replaced them with small freezer bags we didn't want. So we told them we didn't want the small ones. 
but the driver couldn't find the small bags in the packaging. So in the end, he said, I've crossed it, I've crossed it off. He says, they're yours if you find them. Well, we did find them. So all the penguins went in free bags as well. So I think God did that. Yeah, I loved Andy <laughs> told me that earlier. And I love the story because Andy thought of the penguin bars and you hadn't planned to put them in the freezer bags, had you at the time? No. Um, and it's almost like God gave you some free freezer bags just to help you out with this idea. Yeah. And I do think, um, it sounds silly, but when we step out and try and build fellowship, God is so wanting us to have that fellowship with him and with the rest of the church that he is investing in it as well. And it is like he invested in that project and wanted it to happen and loves fellowship and I do think prayer is key, and I do think there is such a supernatural element to fellowship that God blesses it, God loves it, it's so in his heart. And, you know, when when we look in Acts 2, it follows the Holy Spirit moving and stirring them, and, and it's so part of it. Last week, Tim was telling us that it starts with our horizontal, uh, no, our vertical connection with God, Oops. and then with our horizontal connection with other people, yeah. but... God is so for fellowship and I think he blesses it richly. So thanks for that story, Andy. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, I think praying before um, you maybe make the contact and some of us maybe are nervous about picking up the phone and it's not some kind of random thing where I was going to say the phone book, but of course people don't have phone books these days, but it's not a random thing. You know, who's the Holy Spirit bringing to mind? Who's the Holy Spirit? As you're praying, as you're thinking about who to contact, and uh, a thousand and one things may come through your mind about, you know, what are they going to say? Well, let's not second guess what they're going to say. Let's just trust that God's put that person on our heart and our mind at that right time, at that right moment for us to make the contact. Because in my experience, when people have made those phone calls, it's only later in the week, someone's been reflecting and just saying, I was just hoping or praying that somebody was going to call, call me today or I really needed to offload or I really needed to share this or share that. Uh, and our, our fellowship is so important. And, and some of the people that I've had the greatest friendships and that have blessed me the most are the people I least expected in True. the church. So don't pre presuppose anything, but just step out and make some connections. Well, we're going to uh, go into a song and in this song there'll be a chance just to um, give your tithes and offerings and uh, that will come up along the screen as well. So thank you Andy and Sharon for joining us. Thank you Nick for all the Pleasure. input and I want to thank Alex for coming out on Thursday night and recording hey. this for us. Thank you Alex thank too. You, Alex. <laughs> Let's go to a song. <laughs>